Shall we proceed? Yes, ma'am. Wait, wait for some five minutes, ma'am. Ah, okay, okay, sir. Okay. We shall wait for five or uh, some minutes so that others can join. Uh, students, kindly mute your audio and video, please. Banumati madam, you can start. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So let me share the, the material for your reference. Do you have uh, the material with you? I mean, all are having the booklet with you? Not now, but at home. Anybody can answer, please? Can I? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Yes, we have. Yes, we have. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. Okay. For your reference, I'm just showing the book and teaching, so that you can mark whatever you want. Now, if you are having book, you can mark it down, or else you can just see. Because I didn't. Uh, I'm not going to share any PPT or anything else. If I show you the book and say what is that, it will be easily understandable right so i'm just showing uh, the entire uh, pdf file your book in pdf file i'm just sharing this is the subject management concept and uh, organization behavior uh, so this is the front page you have course code and everything can you able to see yes now uh, you have five units um the, the syllabus is this one management concept and organization behave, behave, uh, behavior you have uh, totally five units a first unit covers the general introduction about management and its function and and the entire details in the unit one and unit two you have the organizational structure how the organization has been structured and how it it has been designed that is your unit two. And third unit is perception and learning. And fourth unit about the leadership and the other motivational uh, things, theories. And the last unit is about the styles and approaches. You have different approaches and different methods. So everything will be seeing. This paper is full of theory. So if you have uh, completed your uh, BCom, this would be very easy. Like uh, the same paper you will be having in uh, MBA also. No change, both are very similar. Mm -hmm. this, this paper 
is very easy if you uh, understand the concept so let's let us move to the unit 1 today what is management so i'm showing this page meaning of management if you see this one can able to see the heading meaning of management is the page is clear yes okay okay thank you so uh, what is management so management is uh, getting things done by others so you need to have some quality of getting the work done by others that is called management so you should have that ability that skill and you you need to make other people to do some work that extracting the work from others you should have that ability that is the one term definition of management getting things done by others that is the definition for uh, the term management now you have you can write n number of meanings but you just understand this one word getting things done by others that is the one word definition for the management if you see here the definition is given in codes management is a process of planning uh, organizing leading controlling the effects of organizational members so based on the one term we can we can write the meaning of management in different ways okay now you see the points given in bullet management is a continuous process of course you, you need to manage each and every time you cannot stop doing the things right so that is a continuous process and it has many features like it managers use the resources of the organization both uh, in physical as well as human and all the thing you need to do is whatever you are doing you need to attain the organizational goal definitely you have a certain particular goal or objective so you need to focus towards that goal or objective and accordingly you have to manage everything so that you can uh, attain the objective this is fun then if you see i said what is management is now here the term management can be taken in two ways whether it is a science or it is an art now first let me say management as a science now if you are a manager assume that you are a manager you need to know uh, both the things uh, as a science as a art so science means you can simply say it is a language knowledge so you ha you have to know about a knowledge about particular thing about that is science science is you need to know about knowledge of particular fact or truth that is science art means it it gives an application of knowledge or how you are uh using that knowledge and incorporating in particular work that is you can simply say it is skill so put together if if we ask management is a science or a art if you have given with this question management is an art or a science normally this question will be asked in the question or simply they will uh, put in quotes management is a art or science discuss this would be a normal question that is see every time they will be asking in the uh, first unit portion especially management is an art or science simply you can write about the management and you can uh, write you need to management is both science and art because you need to know about the knowledge and you need to incorporate or inculcate that knowledge and you you should have the time skills to do that work particular work to attain the objective so management is both art and as well as science because you can simply say science means it teaches to know or to uh, to know about particular thing art means it teaches how to do so by this uh, in consulting the knowledge you need to implement in particular work this is the difference between two things science and knowledge so you need to have both science and art so finally we can say management is science and as well as 
art is it okay can anyone please yes ma'am is it okay i am going fast yes ma'am no no it's okay no 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 it's okay, okay. shall i continue okay shall i continue yes yeah yeah okay this is one thing so i said about management and uh, with it's it is an art of science and the uh, it is science and as well as art and the other side you can just management as a profession that is uh, the same thing but majorly they focus uh, science and art you can just see when you are uh, read and see when you are free then straight away i'll go to functions of management right okay mm. now in functions of management you have five functions one is planning other one is organizing if you see here planning organizing staffing directing and controlling let me explain one by one first i'll say what is planning is you can make a note of it because each and every page is uh, you are not um, comfortable no so it is not compulsory like you need to read each and every pages so whatever heading i am saying just uh, mark it down if you don't have the book just write the heading alone and by the next class if, if this is more comfortable no if i show the book and uh, explain you can make a note of it rather than listening or uh, taking a uh, class notes you can just put a tick or uh, make a mark in your book so that uh, next time if you take you can just revise whatever I have uh, focused on so i said about management i said about the science and the art and in the third uh, heading i'm moving with functions of management here you have five five functions in that i'll explain planning So here, the first function is planning. So in uh, management concept, the first most important concept is functions of management. This is very important questions. So let me explain this. You have five functions. In that first one is planning. Planning means, I think that in this full paper, uh, I assume like you are a manager. Uh, if you are a manager, how you will do your management activity? in that first one you will go for planning something if you need to attain your objective or goal first what you will do you will obviously plan for it right so first planning means simply what need to be done what to do how to do and when to do so you in first paragraph the last two lines this is actually what planning is what you need to plan right if you plan then how to do that one how will you incorporate it and everything everything in the question form so planning you need to plan it is looking forward you are predicting the future you are estimating or you are you make things to happen because obviously management meaning is getting things done by others then how you will make the people to do particular work you will obviously plan right if you have some function in your home you have n number of people family members you will plan right this uh, this uh, my brother will do this work so i'll allocate that work to him and my sister will do this my sister will do this work. so i will allocate Can that i will change the page on the screen why we show functions of management Oh, man your screen is froze i guess i guess now can you able to see no 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 it is still management as an art i just moved i think uh, the network is slow i am having only the planning page okay okay no problem it's okay ma'am it's okay now which page it is visible <laughs> management as science and art i don't know why it is now you can stop sharing and then share again it will be fine don't want you don't want this uh, file no 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 if you stop presenting and then present again it, it will be fine 
No, I am not sharing anything. What you don't want this file to share? Shall I proceed very only only audio is enough. Yes, yes, yes. Please, please carry on. Are you? Shall I stop sharing this page? No, ma'am, not like that. If you stop presenting and then if you present it again, it will uh, be fine. It will be fine. The frozen screen will be fine. My voice is breaking. It's okay, ma'am. Continue. We have the book. Okay. Okay then. I don't know why it is not showing. Okay, let me continue. Right. So, uh, as I said, uh, you need to ask question um, with yourself, like what to do and how to do. That is one thing. That is the first uh, function called planning. Then, after planning, the second function is organizing. Now, organizing is the very uh, basic thing. How you need to segregate or categorize the work to different people. Or determining the activities required to achieve the goal. Your goal is fixed. You planned for it. After planning, you need to determine such activities towards the goal or grouping of activities into department. As I said, no, right? You planned, so you are grouping the work. This work to particular department. This type of work to other particular department, so that they'll effectively and efficiently do that work. As per the plan, you need to uh, segregate or group the activities into different department. That is called organizing. You can simply say grouping of activities to different department or assigning. Uh, a group of activities to manager or delegating some work to some people so that they can do effectively. This is called organizing us. Then the third function, I finished planning, organizing. Now the third function is staffing. Staffing means it is as the term itself defined, it involves the manpower. Staffing means you need to recruit particular people who will be effectively uh, doing that work. If you don't have that manpower, you need to recruit, right? So you need to recruit and select right people for right job. One word I, we can say, you can say like right people for right job. So staffing is this one. So what is your work? So who is the people going to do that particular work? So right man for right job is called staffing. Accordingly, you need to go for recruitment and selection. In if you go for, you have separate, separate uh, unit for this one, planning as one unit, organizing as one unit, and staffing as one unit. If you go for staffing there, you'll be uh, in, uh, having uh, the recruitment process, selection process, and everything. But here, that is not uh, given, only the introduction. So staffing means right people for right job and finally directing the next function is directing directing means you're just insisting or it is uh, you can simply call this directing or motivating or you, you can say actually what to do right that is called directing if you are doing in other way you need to tell them like this is the way you need to do the work that is directing here you have different motivational theories. So if a particular man is not doing the work, uh, what is the problem in him? You need to find the problem. If he has some problem, how you will make that people to work? If some person is not working, how, what are all the motivational concepts you, you need to uh, proceed with him? And number of motivational theories are there. And that you will be seeing in the upcoming chapters. So how you are going to make the people to do the work if he is not doing. So that is the term called directing. How we are going to uh, make the people to do particular work. That is directing. And the last function is controlling. Actually, controlling, if I take the topic controlling, the planning will also come together. Both are, uh, it is closely interrelated terms, planning and controlling. If you go for planning, automatically you will always control. 
like uh, controlling is not like uh, in, uh, telling them harshly to do the work it's like uh, yeah, slowly you need to incorporate incorporate the activities of getting things done by others how will you control them that is establishing the standard of performance controlling if i say uh, the term called controlling you have two different concept one is you have to establish the standard of performance normally you need to fix a standard if you are doing a production function you have to fix the standard if for a particular person you are fixing a standard of producing 100 product that is the standard then you need to watch that person whether he is producing that 100 product either per week or per day or let it be that standard is producing 100 product take it as per week per week la he need to produce 100 product this is standard and you have to note the actual performance so standard is fixed now actual performance you need to watch that particular person or in a or how many staffs you are having so you are watching the actual performance uh, if it is 80 so your standard is 100 and your actual performance of a particular employee is 80 now you need to analyze the difference the deviation is called 20 20 is your deviation controlling means you have to take this deviation as a note and then you need to control them either by giving the motivational uh, thing or any other method you need to incorporate any other method to attain the standard this is called controlling us so if i say controlling you need to understand about two things one is standard and the other one is actual performance so first step in controlling us you need to establish the standard of performance second you need to measure the actual performance and then you need to compare it with the standard performance comparing actual and standard and the third one is you have to identify the deviation why you are identifying the deviation in order to make corrective action right to to uh, correct it and overcome it and finally you have to uh, if it is if as in my example the production he has produced only 80 so what about the deviation 20 so you need to take the corrective measures appropriate corrective measures you need to take this is the functions of management so in functions of management we saw about planning what to do that is called planning organizing means grouping of activities into different departments and staffing means right person in right job and uh, directing means you are motivating or uh, doing making some people to work and finally controlling us uh, the two interrelated function like planning and controlling means you have to compare the standard performance of a particular employee with the actual and need to take corrective measures by calculating the deviation right with this uh, functions of management is over now the next topic i'm going to take us the levels of management now is the is the screen visible yes yes yeah level levels of management management yes ma'am yes ah yes so the next heading is levels of management this is very easy you have three different levels top level management middle level management lower level management or can you can say as supervisory management front line management now in this three functions first we'll see uh, the lower level management or front line management you can simply say it is the supervisory management so here the manager he has to deal with the employees this since it is lower level if you are a manager you need to daily see the workers and you need to tell them to work or allocate them work you should you should cover those people and make them to 
do a particular work so in lower category you are the manager if you are a lower level manager you should have both technical and other human skill to make the people to do particular work right because you have to keep on insisting them to do the work normally people own work so you should have that ability to face the people and talk to them and make them to work accordingly that is the lower level management if you go more with the middle level management here it includes the departmental head so lower category uh, category is over that hierarchy is over then if you move on to the middle level there the departmental head or zonal head or regional managers all these category will come under the middle level management so after this the lower level category their task is to make this lower level as a group to make them to implement the organizational goals or work towards organizational goals and objectives and the top level management is normally the board of directors of the chairman or the dean or managing directors and uh, normally you can say as yes, uh, the policy makers because they are making or they are uh, making the policies and that will be shifted to the middle level and these middle level man managers makes the lower level people and lower level managers and delegate the work so that the hierarchy follows so the top means the policy makers middle level means the departmental head or zonal head those people and the lower level means the supervisory level these are the three levels of the management so accordingly each managers has to do their respective work it depends upon their designation whether they are middle level or if they are in the lower level is it okay now yes now yes ma'am yes now we will move on to uh, the skills so we saw about the functions and we saw about the levels of management now in this levels of management you need to have different skills what the lower level manager should have what the middle level manager should have and what the top level management manager should have here the lower level if you see the page this you have three skills technical skill human skill and conceptual skill technical skills means you need to have the ability to use the tools equipment and the procedures so whatever work you are assigned with you should have as we discussed in art and science you should have the knowledge first though you have the knowledge you need to incorporate that knowledge in the activity whatever you are performing right rather than uh, knowing the knowledge you have to incorporate it in the particular work that is the technical skill the effective supervision and coordination of the work should be there so it depends upon the skill the lower level manager possess if you don't have the skill you don't you don't have the ability to make the people to work now so normally the people won't work so you should have that skill as a the first point the manager should have that is the technical skill then if we go with the human skill this is the basic thing because one people will do the work okay no problem if other one is not doing if you roughly talk with him he will definitely do the work so human skill means you have to uh, flexibly move with the people so you have to talk accordingly with the uh, person and uh, you you should make them to work so human skill is concerned with the person right when a man is highly skilled in uh, in the work he have some uh, attitude right so if accordingly you need to move with those uh, qualified or semi skilled or skilled people different types different people will be coming for work and different environment will be there so accordingly you have to balance the people that is called the human skill you have to have the ability to work understand and motivate the people first you need to understand them then you need to motivate them so accordingly you have to make the people to do their uh, work this is something behavioral concept right 
and the final uh, skill is conceptual skill conceptual skill is so you have to see organization and the entire components as a whole you need to have the concept and you need to have the uh, components put together you have you, you should not see separately so technical and human skill will be always seen in lower level management you need to have the technical skill and especially the human skill because you are directly linked with the people so you need to have both skill in the lower level and so in the top level managers you need to have uh, the knowledge like uh, the specific methods the procedures the technique and all other uh, thing the policy making ability and all you need to have in that is simply the conceptual skill you need to be uh, that need to be present in the top level management so in between is the middle level they need to have some of the conceptual skill and the technical and human skill also but it is take top and lower level uh, management in the lower level uh, management the manager should have technical and human skill if you see in the top level management the manager should have the conceptual skill so that they need to they go for the policy making and other things right so this is what uh, the different levels of management and what skill they need to have they need to have in each level of management shall we move on to the next topic okay ma'am so next one is uh, importance of environment all these are not needed straight away if we go for uh, the setting so your unit your is calculated calculated your unit is calculated different different, different lesson lesson 1 lesson 1 lesson 2 lesson 3 3 now we now are in we are in lesson 3 is it audible is it audible because some No, ma'am. Your voice is breaking. Breaking. Yeah, I'm yeah, hearing my own Um, somebody has turned on this mic. Yes. Somebody has turned on this mic. I've just stopped. Just stopped. Stop 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 Now shall I proceed? Now shall I proceed? Shall I proceed? Shall I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Okay. Okay. Let me take Let us. Let me take us. Let me take us. I'm getting echo. Getting echo. Okay. Okay. Then. Then. the next heading i think is planning planning kali ask everybody to mute their mic mics all has i muted everybody has muted i don't know why the voice is breaking and i'm hearing my voice repeatedly 
ஒன்னுங் So the next heading is about planning and planning process. So we, I said enough uh, explanation about uh, planning. In that, uh, if you see uh, the important concept in it, the basic thing, first in planning, first you need to have certain factors to be known. And that first one is to achieve objective. so why we need to plan the purpose if we talk about the purpose of planning why we need to plan the first one if i say the purpose is to achieve the objective so you have fixed some goal or objective for that definitely you need to fix a a plan so to achieve the objective you should definitely fix a plan that is one the purpose of planning and the second one is to make the things happen so you have you need to prepare yourself about the challenges of future what the future would be right you need to estimate the future or forecast the future and accordingly you need to prepare yourself to meet the uncertainties ahead you may not know but you need to make yourself prepared to meet the uncertainties a well thought out plan which solves many of the problem associated with the uncertain future future is uncertain so you need to inform so you need to kindly mute mute your audio please Mahmud I think Mahmud Fawaz Kindly mute your audio please Okay okay Yes thank you So the purpose of uh, planning is you need to fix uh, the objective and you need to make yourself uh, prepared for uncertain future and to cope up uh, with the change as i said that the future is uncertain you need to cope up with the change and you need to control the event the planning and control are often described as a twins of management as i said it is interrelated you need to cope up with both of this so this is the purpose of planning you have certain uh, principles of uh, planning you can just revise you can take your book and revise if you see the step as i said planning and planning process planning process or the steps in planning if if you are going for the concept called planning how you will plan what is the step first what you need to do in that first one is the steps you have five steps five to six steps if if you talk about you have five if you have uh, calcifying you, you will have sub steps and all first in that process or in that steps in planning first one is establishing the goal or fixing the goal so you need to fix the goal of an organization is what first you need to fix the goal either yearly 
or you have prolonged objective, whatever it might be, you need to fix the goal. This is the thing you need to attain. Or this is the thing you need to uh, work for it. That is the goal is goal or objective. So that uh, the employee and the other every activities, uh, everything should move on one line that is called attaining your goal. So first step is you need to fix the goal. The second step is establish planning premises. That is, it is the assumption that uh, how the elements of environment is, right? That is called the second one, establishing the planning premises. Here you can calcify that premises, planning premises into two things. One is internal premises and the other one is external premises. Internally, if you take, it includes the sales forecast, the policy of the organization. So internally, if you are fixing something goal and working towards this, the internal department has to work towards it, uh, either whether this is a sales department or marketing or whatever it is. That is, the internally, you need to make some adjustment or work effectively towards the objective. If their attitude is not positive, then you have to change accordingly. The resources, the skill, the belief of the people, everything comes under the internal premises. Then the other category is external premises. It relates to the external environment. That is uh, the outside. Outside the organization, what are the external factors which affect or which make or give some challenges towards your objective. That is your technological changes, your environmental changes, general economic conditions, the government policies or attitudes or other demographic factors, socio-economic factors and all. So internally, you need to be uh, focused towards the objective. That is making your different departments, your own people, uh, to work towards it and if you go for the external premises you need to be uh, like um, ready for facing all external factors if you have uh, incorporated something you have made something new to the organization if something happens in the economy it obviously affects your business also the external factors the economic factors. Now, it is uh, because of this COVID-19, we are having online classes. This is also the, econo the economical or lower uh, economic, we are facing this problem. So all these are affecting our uh, business or the studies or whatever it is. Likewise, you need to be focused. So that only in the first step I said, you need to uh, predict about the future. And if you are predicting, or you need to have that ability to face the uncertainties, whatever that is happening in the future. That is the second one. Yes, the second point is divided into two, the external and the internal premises. And the third step is decide the planning period. Deciding the planning period. So if you, if you can plan, like you can plan for one year, you can plan for one month, or you can even plan for one day also. Planning is something you're, you're going to do uh, something for that you are fixing some time. This is your objective. Either it may extend to five to 10 years also. That depends upon your objective. So depends upon your objective, you can plan accordingly. So while planning, you need to fix the period also. That is called deciding the planning period. It may vary. That vary depends upon the uh, your objective. If you see the term called payback period, this is one concept you will be uh, studying in financial management. Uh, payback period. If you are uh, become graduate, na, you, you know about the financial management in that payback period concept will be there in financial management. Payback period means what uh, period exactly the planning you are making and within which period you are getting the return back. Rest, that is called payback period. So accordingly, you need to plan. That is one. We leave that topic. Then the next step. So first I said about uh, fixing the goal. Second point is 
establishing planning premises third one is deciding the planning period and the fourth one is develop alternatives and select course of action you need to have some alternatives development alternatively what course of action can be taken if a particular plan is not working out okay the objective may be achieved by different course of actions for example the technical know how will be developed or any collaboration with foreign company tying up everything may happen if it is not working out what will be the alternatives that should be evaluated and overall goals of the organization will be will be achieved accordingly this is the next step that is developing alternative and selecting a particular course of action and the review the last point is review periodically a review means so if you have planned for one year if you are fixing the plan with that you may not go keeping that plan as one side and doing some work on the other side no it should not be like that so you need to have a proper review either one month that depends upon the period as i said if you if it is for three years or if it is for four or five years you need to have the review either quarterly or offerly you need to follow up the plan and you need to analyze whether everybody are working towards it that is the uh, review so this is what uh, the planning and the processes the fifth heading what we covered is about the planning the purpose of planning and i said i we talked about uh, the process or steps in planning and uh, the next one is uh, some limitations as uh, given in planning because uh, since planning is a very big uh, uh, topic you have a different uh, concept in it now if you see the limitations i'll just list what the limitation is because uh, uh, you can write in your own words but i say just uh, the hint limitations of plan so you are planning or fixing something you are working towards it then what would be the limitation in it first one is it would be costly and time consuming so if you plan it, it may uh, it takes some time to spend on forecasting evaluating alternative it is uh, as i said no you need to have some alternatives so you are fixing something your plan your plan to something and if it is not working out you need to sit and decide if it is not working out what is the other solution or the other way so on the other side you need to have the alternative action also that is one and it depends on the forecast so planning sometime it loses its value if reliable and adequate data is not available so whatever you are planning that cannot be uh, implemented all of a sudden that needs to have some focus it depends upon the focus so now uh, every class you you have attended personally but now we are attending online so you may not uh, decide that, like this will happen for a prolonged period no so though we have planned we are not uh, incorporating that one means that depends upon the uh, the situation or the environment and inflexibility if i say uh, in flexibility planning sometimes becomes very rigid because of inflexibility if you see if some people are not working and you have a plan something new for them if you are rigid and if you are inflexible it may not work that is called inflexibility and influence of external factors as we discussed in the process external premises the same thing influence of the external factors so many factors will be affecting uh, your planning whatever you have planned that will be affected because of external factors as i listed earlier the external factors like the government control technological changes or any other uh, economic or socio economic happenings in the uh, particular economy that obviously affect your the planning so whatever you have planned you need to 
change it according to the economic conditions then resistance to change so planning is obviously important uh, thing is you have the resistance to change the human elements will always have the mentality of changing so if you have planned something if people are changing uh, in their by their own way if they are not flexible then you need to look forward and you need to uh, accept those changes and accordingly you need to change your plan it's not like planning is fixed you can change or it will change according to the economic and other external factors so it is not like once uh, the planning is fixed the entire thing is over no not like that this it has all these uh, limitations and not formulating the corrective plans if you fix some plan and if you are not taking the corrective actions for a particular thing so obviously it, it tends to change so these are the limitation if i say if i say the limitation once again it is costly or time consuming secondly it depends on forecast or third one is it is inflexibility fourth one is it is influence of uh, external factors fifth one is uh, resistant to change and the last one is uh, not formulating corrective plans these are the limitations of uh, the planning so uh, shall we so stop us 10 more minutes shall we discuss any other topic or you want to ask me any questions or we'll stop here because by tomorrow also you'll be having the same class from 6 to 7 tomorrow 6 to 7 so shall i stop or shall i proceed anyone please and no no i think it is enough for today what no no have i done i think it is oh uh, can i speak ah uh. yeah yeah you know what are the points you have thought us today like what are the headings are they like important i mean the ones we have to focus for exam or is just you taught in general no no i have uh, talking about unit 1 yeah ma'am all mm. uh, in all the chapter like what are like limitations and different headings you taught us no ma'am that was mm-hmm. like important for exam we can focus in this alone yeah because uh, more number of topics is there like environment and everything yeah. i have i left those topics only important and just uh, sharing with you okay that is exam oriented right ma'am the, the paper will be questions will be easy they may ask the straight question like explain the limitation also or sometimes okay. uh, application application oriented questions will also be there if you see university website and uh, go for study material and past year question paper you can just mm-hmm. download and see organizational okay. uh, uh, concept and uh, management concept and organizational behavior and all other subject past year question paper will be there mm-hmm. if you are not getting because recently they have uh, made some changes in the website so if you are not seeing those uh, thing there is a link in uh, distance education go go for the old website to download the study material and question paper go for that and you can download the soft copy of the material if you are not having the books and other things material if at all you are not down- able to download the question paper if we are nearby go to university uh, dde in the dde you have library in library past year question papers or filed properly depends upon the uh, section like mcom first year mcom second year mba and other so if you go and see all the question papers if i am come first year if you have five subjects five subject question papers will be there you can take a xerox and uh, you can come this is other way i'm saying if you are not able to download if you are not seeing question paper in the website you can go and uh, see in the university dd thank you ma'am Mm, this is one okay last 5 minutes uh, i just uh, say the heading alone what i 
covered today because i have moved very slowly because you have five units i think for mcom you have only five hours for each subject so five hours for each subject means in each one day i need to complete one unit so we have just uh, covered a little bit only okay we'll just say what is what by the next class uh, according to the schedule we'll move on and today i'll say uh, what are all we saw today is uh, I, i talked about management management is getting things done by others and i talked about science art and science management as a science management as heart and third third one is very important that is function of management uh, as you asked for the important question this third concept i talked about this functions of management those five function planning organizing staffing directing and controlling and the fourth fun concept is levels of management levels of management we saw top level middle level and the lower level management and with certain skills what they need to have three skills we saw managerial skill uh, the three skills are technical skills human skill and uh, conceptual skill these are the th three skills those three uh, managers should have this is the fourth heading we talked about and fifth one is the vast heading about planning purpose and the process and planning so i talked about the purpose four points four to five points and the planning process is uh, five points that is uh, fixing the goal planning about the premises and third is uh, deciding the planning period and uh, fixing alternative and selecting the course of action and finally the review the last heading is about um, limitations of planning that is about the cost and time consumed and, uh, and certain four to five points have uh, discussed so by next class we'll move on with the other uh, topics right <laughs> yes if you have any doubt you can ask me or anything to be asked ma'am ma'am i just found the question paper uh, ma'am ma'am exam november will be conducted uh, 2015 okay uh, um this will be the same manner the question paper yeah pattern will be the same mostly okay. if you take the past year question paper and if you keep aside the same question will be repeated mostly if you um, take five year past five years question paper and revise that is enough because if you take first unit you may not know which topic should be covered and which topic should be left out questions will be asked through chat box please uh, madam thank you very much and uh, next class will be taken by dr madan Mm, okay okay business ma environmental la thank you madam thank you ma'am thank you ma'am Shall I start, madam? Okay, you can you can start, sir. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, students. Good evening, sir. 
let's be good evening good evening sir uh, shall we uh, shall we see the book ah is it visible is it visible yes sir yes sir okay 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 yes sir uh, uh, this is a subject about uh, business environment and law environment and law i am dr k madan first of all we will uh, see the unit number 1 first of all, you should know what is meant by business then we will go uh, below that what what is the business anyone you can uh, tell me what is meant by business and then i will explain it before starting my class no no one is explaining okay i just explain it business is an act one activity uh, for which we are going to transact a transacting the events that you are going to appear for a particular time that is it's called as a business whether you are going to sell or buy a certain goods and services in a particular place or in a particular area or in a particular time then we can call it as a business for which for what purpose you are doing the business for what purpose we are doing the business means in order to uh, certain amount of a in the way of exchanging of goods exchanging the value of goods so when you are uh, um, sending or transferring goods from one, per one person to another person or transferring goods from one place to another place from which we are creating certain utilities like a form utility time utility from which you are going to get a profit out of it that we can call as a business it has to be you know he this is just for what it is called a business okay so in a in a dictionary mean we we can we can say it is a, it is a buying and selling of goods and services for a trade purpose for a trade or commerce or trade then we can call it as a business somebody who is telling that it is any any uh, any activity any activity that you are doing for gainful activity that which is elements of society to conduct exchange of desirable things if you are exchanging uh, whatever desirable things from one person to another person from which you are it is gainable that we can call as a business what is the nature of business what is the nature of business main purpose of business is to get a profit Whoever it is, whoever it is, we are doing the business. The main purpose, main purpose, and we can call it the main objective, is called is to gain a profit. Okay, main. It is a uh, important for any business or any organization who is doing the business. Apart from that, we have creating certain uh, opportunities like uh, creation of job opportunities, and. Uh, offering a better quality of life better quality of life and also also supplying of goods and services to the needy people okay that is also another purpose for what purpose even if the business is not 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 there you are not going to get a goods and services okay you are not going to produce you are not going to produce a, all kinds of all varieties of products by yourself so the business people the producers are producing the goods and services and also supplying for you people okay wow. so that is a main purpose purpose of business and also is contributing economic growth to the society that is also an important concept one why you are exchanging a uh, goods and services from which uh, they are earning a profit through which uh, a uh, lot of people are getting a job opportunities and it, uh, it will create a purchasing power to the individuals it will uh, it will while while increasing the power purchasing power of an individual that leads to the economic growth that leads to a economic growth 
so income of the individual has been increasing so that will lead to an economic growth of a, of our country so these are all the main inside the purpose of a business if the business is like you know very well for example in the covid situation it's around uh, um 6 to 7 months there will be a lot of lockdowns have been takes place so that is a, a, a time for which the business is not to be not too good so that leads to what happen, what happens that leads to that leads to a low a very low growth in our economy okay so the business is not there if the business is not there it leads to economy will go down okay so the business is the main important thing for the growth of our economy okay and the next one is called a business goals what is business goals what is business goal goal that three things we can say lot of things are there main thing that i already told that profit making profit is the primary goal of the business enterprise and in second is the growth what is the growth the business should grow in all direction over a period of period of time okay first initially you just go an example you can go to an example of a reliance 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 industry first initially in 1950s or 40s that will be a very small uh, 50s is a very small companies but now you say you know you can uh, go and refer the reliance industries are a very uh, highest uh, they are they are the highest earner and they are getting profitable to business in india or uh, when you are comparing to the all over the world okay so that is the growth how the growth takes place because of the uh, giving a lot of schemes and lot of um, varieties of products that they are uh, handling and uh, by the way of how they are going to reach it so that is a lot of strategies that can be adopted lot of uh, strategies that can be adopted by them to achieve the goal okay that is the second thing growth is also an important thing for a business goals and next one is power so the business houses have vast resources as as it comes this resources confers a enormous economic and political power that the same examples for a uh, for our uh, political wise as well as economical wise if the business is grow, grown means that will have an impact over the economy that will having a very good power to uh, materialize as well as uh, uh, handle the lot of political uh, areas also that will be uh, giving a power because of the business power, business business lot of uh, businesses next one is employee satisfaction and development okay if you are working in a infosys company you are going to get a very good salary and also uh, if you are uh, buying a shares in that company it's having a very good uh, uh, very good uh, development so what it happen so the employee satisfaction also takes place because of the salary and also the development also takes place because of the business goal if the business is not there if the business is not grown at the time they are you are not able to get that goal easily okay so the economic satisfaction and development must take place because of the business goals and market leadership you know that if you are a, if you are our you are earning a very good profit and also you are getting a lot of employees in your hands means you are getting a market share so uh, the initially even i can take on the same example of jio jio so initially uh, when you are entering into the market they uh, they give at a zero uh, zero zero rupees for a zero rupees they are entering into the market so lot of uh, customers are went to that jio uh, for a free for three months for three months three months they are free for at the time they almost captured a 40 to 50 percent of the total share total share of a telecommunication sector in india so after that yeah, after that after three months they are increasing their uh, prices prices of the uh, prices of that product so these kind of uh, market leadership was takes place now we can see that the jio is a uh, one of the main economic uh, uh, leading uh, lead, uh, leader of a uh, telecommunication sector in india because of that reason lot of a uh, uh, small industries uh, small uh, companies are in totally destroyed 
like even just go to the idea company idea and even the vodafone and atel lot of companies are the so much disturbed by the way of a the, the, the new leadership of a, a geo so okay the smart these are the business goals business goals if you want to become a, a leader if you want to make a goal first of all once if you are ma- creating a goal that will leads to a uh, goal to an height okay next one is called challenging what is that challenging you must be challengeable you must uh, challenge you have to make a risk for which you have to make a challenge that is a business offers vast scope under process formidable challenges what is that formidable challenges we have to face lot of problems lot of problems while doing a business so at that time we need to uh, face the challenges okay next is joy of creation so through which you are if you are doing a business if you are doing a business means you have every right you have a vast scope for creating a new ideas new ideas and innovations new ideas and innovations are the creating a shape for your new products okay so that will be happen because of this business goals and then so a service to the society finally you are giving a very good service to our society society okay so these are the main important goals of a business okay then you will move on to the year after only we are going to that business environment okay what is business environment from the, the definition of bayard o wheeler the total of all things external to the firms and industries which affects the organization and operation okay if you are doing a business if you are doing a business definitely there will be some factors factors that will influence you that will influence you to run the influence you to do certain activity in the business whether it may be a uh, inside one that is called internal or it may be a external factors okay so that factors influence you to that will influence or affect affect you to while doing your operations of your business that kind of uh, things we can call in a total way we can call it is called a business environment okay so another definition is also that author m wiener business environment m composes the climate or set of condition economic social political or institutional in which business operates are conducted okay so we will move on to the types of business environment types of business environment okay in the types of business environment we have classifying into two major uh, types of environment that is one is micro environment and another one is macro environment you know you know well that what is meant by micro micro is nothing but it is called a it is very small in nature what is what is it should be derived from the word micros 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 okay what is micro it is small in nature how in a in our environment which one is small in nature which one is small in nature that is inside your organization inside your business you can do or make any decisions that will be done by you in that organization within the organization we have certain things environment is there there so that kind of environment is called a micro environment that is, that is called a internal matters of the business we can call it as a internal matters of the business what is internal matter what are the what are the internal matters that will affect your business first one is structure of business <coughs> structure of business what kind of structure whether it is horizontal structure or vertical structure what kind of structure that you are going to decide if you are a businessman that you are going to decide about the structure okay so while creating the structure of the business you are going to decide so that kind of decisions that be sometimes that will influence your business that is the structure and size of business what is the size whether it is a small size or medium medium size or a large business according to investment only the size of business must take place so that environment is also in your hands you must decide it. you should decide it what business or what type of a area for which you are going to do business business what how what is the amount for which you are going to make an investment 
all those things that will be in your hands okay that is the it is called internal matters of your business and then policy related to the business the policy decisions objectives while doing a business you have to create a we while while you are starting a business you have to create a policy first of all policy and objectives so these are the main two things when you are going to create a quality means quality policies are important and also quality objectives are important so the quality policy and quality objectives related to the business which have been created by you peoples the you means it for the business peoples so that these are all our internal affairs internal affairs that will be it may uh, sometimes it may be changed or it may be uh, because of that reason only they can go as a internal issues internal matters okay and next one is product produce what type of product produced that should be determined by you not by others not by others okay you only deciding it you are you, you only while creating a product planning you are collecting the various ideas from that ideas you are screening it after screening what will happen you are uh, analyzing with your uh, environment and finally you fixing it then you, then only you are going to convert the, the paper ideas the idea of paper into products you are going to convert so all the things that could be in your hands the product produce policy decisions the size of the business and structure of the business so these are all the internal matters internal matters related to the business that we can call it as a micro environment that it's definitely that will influence you that will influence you in your business that kind of uh, environments are called micro environment that kind of environment is called a micro environment next one is called macro environment what is macro environment macro it clearly said that it is large in nature it is large it is that uh, you cannot be able to control it you cannot be able to control it that kind of environments are called macro environment or we can call it as a external environment external environment in that external environment we have a, what are the what are the influential factors what are the influential factors that influence you in the macro environment first one is called a demographic environment first uh, i just asking what is meant by demography what is meant by demography anyone tell me it is audible now audible or not it's audible ah yes please tell me what is meant by demography no okay i just explained what oh, demography demography i think that it is a study of population it is a study of population so in the demographic environment you are going to study or you are going to know about that population the population increase or decrease their age their uh, culture their uh, preferences you are, that those things which are not in your hands those things which are not in your hands okay that is the first environment that is called demographic demographic environment so the population population that will exist in your country or or in your, in the in the world that world because the population their age factors according to the age factor their preference are changed according to their according to their culture their uh, their uh, their preference are changed so that population related areas are called demographic environment okay next one is called the economic environment economic environment you know very well if economic which is more straight away related to the income of an individual income of an individual so, uh, how how it how it happens if the peoples are getting a very good uh, uh, employment and also getting a very good income then the, the economic economy will become a very good so then only they can able to purchase your products okay that is it's also not in your hands economic environment okay so if an economy which is go good 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 means definitely 
that uh, when you are creating or when you are doing the business in that area that will leads to a very good profit for your business when if the people are having a very good uh, they don't have a income at all in that areas when you are doing a business means how it is happen definitely you are not going to um, get a profit because of that economic environment which is available in that place okay that is the main reason why why uh, most of the peoples or most of the business peoples are not at all interested to go to in africa uh, africa for doing the business and the africa side means for example um, you take um, ethiopia or um, like like that uh, areas uh, countries countries why the, those peoples are not at all interested for doing the business because of that economic system those peoples are very much poor very much poor even for a food they don't have an amount how would it happen that they will buy a sophisticated products in that in that area in the country so that is the reason that kind of uh, large business people are not at all interested to go for that area because of the economic system why why lot of uh, this large companies or big companies are come forward to our country we are economically growing that is the main reason that is the main reason main reason for which they are coming and also another important another important factors for the demographical the population the population is high in our country a large share large share will be uh, came from the large population okay uh, while you know very well that a uh, word of phone company word of phone company is a uh, it is an england company England company, but they came 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 forward to create a business in India. What is the reason? What is the reason? They are while creating a market share, they got only one point five or two percentage of Indian market share initially. That one point five or two percentage of shares, it's a share amount of total England population. Okay, that population will create a share for. come forward to doing the business in our country that is the main reason for which lot of international companies as well as our country a business are growing or doing the business in our country okay and also another important factor is economic system economic system okay we are economically growing economically growing well, well compared to last 20 years or 30 years we are economically grown but in our in the present situation that will be will be in a downward downward trend because of the covid reason okay the economic environment is are another important factor next one is called geographical and ecological environment you know what is my geographical geographical is a it is a study about the area geographical environment is called a climatic condition and the natural resources which have been takes place have in a particular nation that is not in our hands that a geographical area this is the area in which you are going to do a business when you are doing a business in uh, tamil nadu or if you are going to do a business in india so this is uh, from that what is the resources that will be available from that resources only you can able to do a business okay that uh, that will be comma there are uh, um, that is the main important thing in the geographical and ecological environment and next one is called a legal environment so what is the legal environment the legal environment is nothing but that is a legal or regulations and rules which have been framed for the business in the particular nation this is also not in our hands because the rules and regulations which have been created and also formulated by our government if it is in india means they are having their rules and regulations when you are going to a some other country they are having their own uh, own regulations rules and regulations the legal policy for doing the business in in our country some of the goods which have been admitted for doing the business when you are going to some other country for example even go to even go to the sri lanka some goods which have been not at all permitted to do the business in that country okay what is the reason in that uh, country they are framing certain rules and regulations the legal policies for which they are adopting so accordingly accordingly only uh, we have you have to do the business okay when you are going for an international business when you are doing a, a local business we have certain that indian country 
the Indian nation is having their own rules and regulations, which have been framed by Indian government. The business policies accordingly only how to do the business. That kind of environment is called a legal environment. Uh, from that, from uh, from the four environment that I explained, you are not. In a controllable, you are you, that is not in your hands, okay. And next one is called technological environment. Technology, you know very well, it is a systematic application of scientific or other organized knowledge to a practical task, okay. The technological changes, okay. Even we are growing now, we are telling that our economy is growing, economy, we are almost technologically good, technologically good that we are saying, we are saying, but. Where while you are comparing with America, Japan, some of the developed countries, we are almost 10 years back. 10 years back. Don't think that we are using a very good technology in only in mobile, mobile technology. But in other areas, in other areas, when you are going to the production area, when you are going to and some other uh, medical, medical facility areas, other areas, we are so, so much of lacking. So much of a lacking. We are almost uh, technologically now only we are going, growing, growing. That is main important thing. That that uh, when you are compared with the uh, Korean companies or when uh, Japanese companies or American companies, Germany companies, the technologically we are very much a uh, lacking the uh, technology. So that uh, when you are going to compete with the technological environment, that is also. That not in our hands. The technologically, that people are doing. We have to self-sustain it. When you have to self-sustain it, means we need to improve our technology. Okay, that is also not in our hands. Okay, and next one is called political environment. Political environment. Political environment is nothing but it is a political institutions that legislature. Executive and judiciary shaping, directing, and developing and controlling the business activities. Okay, that I already told that the political environment is indispensable for business growth. There are the political environment that has been framed, framed by, for example, some of the political environment which have been takes place in our country. Accordingly, the business activities are takes place. When after uh, the election was conducted, uh, conducted, there will be change in the political power means. In that area, in that time also, we need to go for some other uh, policy decisions because of the political environment. Political environment takes place in that particular time. Okay, that is also not in our hands. And next one is called natural environment. What is natural environment? It is a business uh, in a particular areas or particular uh, business, how it has been uh, influenced by the nature. When you are doing a business in India, some of the goods which are being uh, acceptable as well as adaptable in that particular nature, nature of the business. But while you are going to the same products to some other country means that is not acceptable. That is not a acceptable because of the nature that is having takes place in that country. Okay, That is a natural environment. And social and cultural environment. That is Another important factor is that the people's attitude to work, to wealth, and the uh, role of family, marriage, religion, education, ethical issue, and social uh, responsiveness of business. So these are all the some of the social and cultural environments. Okay, while you are going to the role of family or marriage, if you are a married people, if you are a married person, you are you are. Um, the viewer behavior, that is, we are buying behavior, you are purchasing power, that will be different. And uh, according to the education of the peoples, if you are a manager of a beer, manager, manager of a particular concern, your purchasing behavior is different than layman. Okay, and some ethical issues and social responsibilities. So accordingly, we are, uh, and also another important is for culture. Culture. The culture, what is my culture? Culture is nothing but it will be come from our forefathers. Accordingly, we are living as well as doing our day-to-day -day activities. That is the culture. Okay, that is a collective programming 
of the mind are distinguished the members of the one category of people from those to other that is called it will be coming from our forefathers forefathers to us why those people are doing that area because of the culture okay so these are all the factors these are all the environment which is not in our hands not in our hands that we can call it is a macro environment okay once again i repeat the why i just informing this is a important This is an important question that definitely you have to explain the different types of environment. One is micro environment, another one is macro environment. Micro environments are internal matters of the business uh, that will be controllable by you. Okay, whatever you can change your policy, you can change your size of business structure, policy decisions, products, all things which can be. Controlled by you as well as changeable by you. Okay, while going for a macro, it is not controllable. Okay, that is a external environment like a demography, population, economical and geographical, legal, technological, social, cultural and political. Okay, you just explain all this concept in the what is environment? What are the different types of environment? Are you understood? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next topic. Sir, sir, what particular question is uh, maybe came from this topic? What are important? What are important questions you are asking? Yeah, yeah. Yes, yes sir. Oh, in the uh, in the final session, definitely I'll tell you, sir. Tell you. Okay. Okay. First, I just explaining the concept, the very important concepts. Sir. Then finally, I just give what are the areas that are important, what are the important questions that will come. Definitely, I will explain. Okay. Sure. Okay. 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 So these are the points that is called the corporate governance and social responsibility and business ethics. These are the three topics. corporate governance corporate governance is concerned with holding the balance between the economic and social goals and between individual and commercial goals the governance is framework that will encourage the efficient use of resources and equally to require accountability for checkward of their resources you are going to govern you are going to business you are going to govern your corporates how you are going to use your resources in an effective way for which you are going to achieve a very good your objective you are going to achieve your objective by the way of an effective use of your resources how what kind of resources you have you have a <coughs> you have a uh, labor resources economic resources and then uh, cultural resources what are the resources which have been av available at most uh, you just uh, use the resources in effective way through which you can govern you must stay, set some standards okay you start set some standards accordingly you can do the business by the way which you can achieve their corporate goals okay by the way of corporate goals by the when you are doing uh, goals means you are you are going to make a profit when you are pay one when you are getting a profit then we will will attract the Investments, investments. Okay, so this is the main important thing is in the corporate governance. Corporate governance. Okay, and then you can go to that. On what way it will be a uh, very important? How it is called? It is focusing, focusing. The corporate governance concerned with the values, and then vision and visibility. So these are the main important thing for which uh, the corporate governance is focusing, focus, focusing. What is the how to do a whatever business? Whatever business, you must be a very important thing which for you have certain values out of it, and also you have a clear vision. What way? What way for which you are going? And uh, you have a visibility, not only vision as well as visibility. You, know, you must know in which way way you are going. It is it is focusable, it is achievable, or it can be uh, done it. 
within a stipulated period we can we can able to achievable that can be shown with the help of this corporate governance if you are not having that uh, focus you are not able to achieve it okay so these are the main important focus in the corporate governance what we are why you are doing this kind of things in order to efficiency if you have to efficiency use of resources through which uh, value addition takes place and uh, wealth creation has been takes place with the help of this corporate governance okay nowadays the corporate governance are the, uh, giving a lot of importance in the each and every industry industry why because because of that that will creates a very good efficiency use of a efficiency use of your resources that is the main important thing and also you are creating some value addition value addition of products and then you are uh, this uh, giving a wealth creation and all things has been takes place with the help of this corporate governance okay that is the main thing for which we are uh, very much giving lot of importance to the business about the uh, corporate governance okay and then we will move on to the social responsibility social responsibility uh, do you know what is the social responsibility apart from that profit or decision makers they must think about that social responsibility what is that you must be welfare for the society welfare for the society you must protect the welfare you must protect the consumers you must think about the uh, consumers society society means You, you and you and me, you and me, society. Okay, while doing a business, you must think about the peoples. You must think about the peoples. Not only think about profit, not only think about profit. You must think about the peoples or individual customers. Okay, but nowadays we are the insisting about the social responsibility, but most of the majority of the companies are not at all. not at all thought about that social responsibility at all okay while we are, we are doing the business for profit making we are not at all consider about that individuals individual whether that will affect our health that you they, they won't bother about it they won't bother about it okay so that kind of things now that been takes place but nowadays our our uh, industrialization as well as the governments are insisting about the social responsibility for which only now that uh, csr has been takes place csr has came that is called corporate social responsibility what is that corporate social responsibility minimum of a 2 percentage which have been given by each and every company to the social welfare of the people social welfare of the people that is a social responsibility that will be our government is insisting to do a social responsibility for all the companies okay next we will go to the definition of social responsibility social responsibility refers to the business decision and action takes place taken to reasons at least partially beyond the firm's direct economic and technical interest okay they are mainly concentrating on economic and technical interest okay apart from that we have a, you know you have to think about that other interest of the other interest means they are you must think about the society you must think about the society is also very important thing you you sir you should think about the society also okay that is the definition which have been given by keith davis why this uh, social responsibility is all important this is the argument for social responsibility first one is business has to respond to the needs and expectation of the society while you are doing a business you are producing a product that is mainly need is needs and expectations must be fulfilled that is a very important thing without uh, without thought about the needs and uh, needs and expectations you are uh, producing a product and selling in the market then definitely that is not good for people that is that you must respond to the needs and expectation of the society and then improvement of social environment benefits both society and the business okay you must social responsibility discourages additional government rules and regulation interventions okay i don't want to read all those things main important concept behind this is called this these are these are all done these are all done the social responsibilities are created 
for main purpose of the interest of the each and every individuals in our nation or the uh, interest of the stakeholders stakeholders so these are the main important areas for which the social responsibilities are created okay what is the arguments against social responsibility social responsibility while again social responsibility means we are doing for business this business for profit why not we have we have to uh, influence influence go we do the do the for the social responsibility some of the business people are asking me why the business is not really accountable to the society why why need why i need to uh, spend money for the society but they are getting money uh, from the society but they are not at all ready for spending the money to the society these are the arguments again social responsibility okay we are doing the business we are creating the products for society why we are that itself enough why i why need to spend extra money for the society okay so these are some of the arguments which are being takes place uh, our social responsibility okay who are all the stakeholders of the social social responsibilities or that we can create as a five, six major groups who are the stakeholders one is shareholders employees customers creditors suppliers and others society and the government so these are the six important social stakeholders these groups are called interested groups these groups are called a interested groups that will be takes place in that social responsibility areas okay and then customers uh, each and every areas how that the social responsibilities will uh, uh, take place that will be explained in this area customer to avoid misleading advertisement when you are you are you and ourselves are the customers that main important thing that will expects from the companies first one is avoid misleading advertisement whether it is correct all the companies or all the producers and companies are advertising and that at what they are expecting that will be uh, 100% correct no they are misleading they are misleading they are giving a false information about the product okay and avoid misleading the name of the product avoid authorized dealer's name for a misleading customer avoid wrong information avoid exploiting customer avoid collusive agreement with the other firms to exploit customers so these are the main things that will expense uh, expects from the customer side and the employees the employees say what they expecting you have to give a fair wages and bonus and incentive to employees you have to create a cordial relationship and providing better working conditions even you can go to some companies they don't have a proper economic uh, proper working conditions okay creating opportunities for the talented employees creative creative employment and in proper training if they are lacking in a particular area for doing a particular activity means you have to create a train, training for those people and a proper and a transparent performance and appraisal for promotion okay and then what about the stakeholders stakeholders in the uh, sorry the shareholders you must give a assurance assurance of security of the funds proper payment of return on investment they have invested their money if that investment must be properly returned that is called roi next providing correct information about the company okay this is to the uh, social responsibility for the shareholders for the government the business activity should be a law abiding and a proper payment of taxes abiding the pollution control okay and for the creditors and suppliers maintenance of cordial relationship timely payment and providing true and correct picture of the financial position why these are all important is creditors and suppliers are only uh, thing as well as uh, what you are presented in your balance sheet what you are presenting in your profit and loss account 
so from that only they can able to know what is the financial position of the particular company so that is why you have to give a clear picture in your financial position and to the society preventing monopoly okay you know what is my monopoly monopolies has to be restricted so for that only some policies that some uh, policies are created that is called mrtp act that act is created that is called mrtp act that is monopolies restricted trade practice act okay and disposable of waste and effluents and creating that another thing is called creating employment opportunities and finally balance regional rural development okay so these are the various areas certain things from which uh, the social responsibilities are to be expected from the business from the business from the customer side what they are expecting from the employee side what they are expecting from the shareholder side what they are expecting from the government side what they are expecting from the business and creditors as well as society all the people are expecting about the social responsibilities social responsibility from which what what they are expecting you have to do these things for the society even you are doing the business for profit but you must have certain ethics you have certain ethics and you have to do certain things for the your business okay even you just go to you go and buy a kurkure i just saw in a particular uh, advertisement that that could as a when you are firing the kurkure it will be fired so the that that products we are eating whether they are the producers are having the ethics no not at all not at all not at all so these are all the social responsibility so of the government as well as the, the um, that uh, producers they must restrict these kind of products even a small kids small kids they are uh, buying and using it i when you are when i am going to take classes for the low as uh, so some uh, small kids i just uh, definitely i will influence the people don't buy this kind of products please please don't buy this kind of products this will affect your body that will that will affect your body so these are the social responsibility these are the social responsibility but uh, companies hello please please mute madam mute madam mute it is muted okay so these are the uh, main uh, social responsibilities that we expect from a from the companies okay and next one is called business ethics ethics you know what is the ethics ethics is commonly refers to rules or principles that define right and wrong conduct okay while you are doing certain activity you say uh, somebody is still that this is right this is wrong how would you say how would you say this is right this is wrong from that ethics side this is good from the ethics it is against it is a wrong okay from the same which are been happened in the business ethics business is the ethics concerned with truth and justice as as a variety of aspects such as expect for of the society and fair competition advertising and public relation social responsibilities customer autonomy and corporate behavior in the home country as well as the abroad okay from the business ethics what they expecting you must be justice justice for your for your product you must be justice whatever product you produce you must be justice for that product when you are doing whatever activity you do, you do you do for the society you must justice for that act so that they are expecting whether you are doing a any advertisement or a competition or relationship with the public or social responsibilities you are doing it and uh, any corporate behaviors customer autonomy all things whatever it you are doing it the activity that will be must be truth and justice truth and justice when you are doing that truth and justice that is the ethics that we are expecting from the companies okay from the definition it is that it is a discipline dealing with what is good and bad and with moral duty and the obligation 
yeah i just clearly explained that you know you uh, what is good what is bad you have a moral responsibility each and every uh, people individuals are having a moral responsibility in the same way that i am expecting from the companies also while doing a business you must be moral moral to the customers to the individuals who are buying your products okay so we have classifying that uh, types of ethics we have individual ethics professional ethics and business ethics you know very well what is my individual ethics and each and every individuals we have to follow these are the goods these are bad but nowadays lot of people they don't have any ethics don't have any ethics somebody is who is doing a, doing the activity that is against the ethics that can that can that should be avoided that should be avoided okay and in professional ethics some uh, some of the professional people are doing the uh, their activity that against the against the profession for example you just go to now uh, some private hospitals i don't want to mention their particular name of it okay when you are going to the hospital for an maternity purpose intentionally they are claiming lot of money from the patient whether they have their ethics no they don't have their ethics at all if they are against their profession from the profession they are expecting that you have to do a service do a service for which you are doing a service for which you can collect certain minimum amount okay but they are they are collecting they are huge amount from the from their uh, patients but they are not doing their uh, profession in a correct way okay these are all professional ethics unethical behavior ethical behavior and in business ethics or corporate ethics that ethics which have been formulated by the companies the companies they must follow their certain ethics this is the area this is the pattern percentage of profit that we expect we don't go for the unwanted products that will affect the customers that will affect the people of the society that will create uh, unhealthy behavior of the customers that should be avoided that should be avoided these kind of uh, rules and regulations should be framed in each and every company so then only we can say that that companies are following the ethics ethics or otherwise these companies are not following the ethics okay so uh, these kind of ethics are called a uh, business ethics okay individual or personal ethics or uh, professional ethics and business ethics from that we have a uh, what is the need for business ethics ethical guidelines these are the things that you know you know very well okay you should read it okay and what are the different approaches of the ethics business ethics first one is called moral management i already told that morality morality is an important concept in ethics that morality what do you think you must follow the ethical principles and the precepts and moral management strives for success okay you must have uh, some ethical standards ethical standards so according to the ethical standards you have to do your work okay and also you are following their truth and justice truth and justice but most of the companies are not having their truth and justice in their hands but main thing we are insisting for each and every companies and corporates you must follow that ethics you must follow the ethics okay immoral management uh, yeah this approach is neither immoral or not moral moral it ignores the ethical consideration the immoral management is broadly classified into intentional or unintentional okay somebody is doing with an intentional way they are doing it intentionally unethical somebody is unintentionally doing okay this is takes place in the immoral management that is immoral management and codes of conduct codes of a conduct so code of uh, code of uh, codes of conduct is a formal document that each and every company should frame it frame it these are the things that you have to maintain 
that code is helpful for maintaining a ethical behavior among the employees for which we are creating the code of contacts code of contacts next this is unethical practices what are the unethical practices that have been done in our uh, done done our peoples in the uh, business and that is towards customers adulteration adulteration you know very well what is that they are uh, um adultering adult adulteration takes place when you are uh, combining some other unwanted things in your products that is called adulteration and creating duplicates and spurious products injurious products and a deceptive advertisement you are you are giving an advertisement in a unwanted things and deceptive packaging and containers so these are all are towards the customers and towards the employees they are giving low salaries they are extracting all things from the customers all things from the employees but they are giving a very low amount of salary and giving low wages and getting discharge of higher amount and employing children and poor working conditions these are all the unethical practices done in business and towards government and customers they are giving a tax evasion they are evading the tax this is a when a company uh, they are getting a very good profit but they are showing very lesser amount of profit from which they are evading the taxes okay and bribery and corruption to get a license and quotas over invoicing and under, under invoicing these are all evading taxes okay and uh, they have to follow and also the pollution control board what is the uh, uh, um, rules and regulations which have been given by the pollution control board that the business people the companies or corporations are not following and the payment of money to the parties of power in order to avoid certain things okay the price hikes and unethical activities okay and then what are the tools of economic management that is top management commitment ethical commits and the ethical audits and ethical training and ethical hotline so these are the tools for which you can able to ethical management was takes place okay next one is economic system i uh, just we will see in the next class and the economic system i just explained the main concept you will see the other things in the next class economic system is a social organization through which the uh, people are making their living it may be of a free enterprise uh, different kinds of economic system yeah, we can uh, we have a, a, a free enterprise system government controlled economy mixed economy so these are the main three economies which are being takes place in the economic system that these are the things that will you will see in the class okay you have any doubts ask me stop Sir, when will be the exam? Uh, that uh, the coordinator only you know. The uh, she only knows me. Okay. Because if approximately which month I have an idea. Okay. Which month? Okay. 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 Definitely, uh, uh, they they uh, they inform you on which date their examination is going to commence. Okay, because I'm I'm staying in Hyderabad, so I need like a little bit earlier. So um, accordingly, I can come back to India. That's all. Ah, it is not audible, ma. Hello, not audible. Ma. Hello, please. please. Yeah, what I told is, sir, I'm staying abroad, so accordingly, I have to come back to India. So, uh, will it be informed earlier? One minute. One minute. One minute. Uh, tell me, sir. I am staying abroad, so uh, I yeah. want to know a little bit earlier. Like, uh, uh, um, accordingly, I, I need to take ticket and all no, to come back okay. to India. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay, madam. Yeah. So uh, uh, you just contact the DD office. DD office. They will definitely. They will inform you. Okay. Oh. Okay. the distance education office Hello? office time office time definitely they will inform you okay ah uh, tell me sir please uh, uh, talk uh, talk about important questions you have already discussed 
ah uh, from that uh, from this area definitely a uh, one question will uh, be from that i call different types of environment here is uh, what i thought uh, teach uh, yeah yeah from that from that here definitely one question definitely one question is different types of environment okay sir thank you sir no good evening sir uh, good evening uh, sir my name is vaishnav i am from calcutta kerala okay okay Uh, good okay, sir uh, i just want to know whether it will be an online exam or offline uh that i could not able to say now because that it has been a decision which have been taken by the control of examination side okay definitely i in my in my point of view definitely the online examination i think so okay 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 thank you sir i cannot able to say okay because that uh, examination being only they will take a decision definitely they will inform you okay 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 thank you sir thank you. or otherwise i will close it madam i will close it so ah tell me tell me for, for nature and scope of environment we can take uh, we can write types of environment right ah yes thank you yes or you uh, if you have any questions please ask me or otherwise i will close it Hello, sir. Ah, tell yeah, me, actually, tell me. Um, I missed out on the first starting part. I just want to know: Is it first year's portion which you are taking now? First day? What? What? First year's post portion. Are you taking now? No, madam. This is a portion of a business environment and law. And another part is law that I have to explain in the third unit. So I'm asking: Is it for first year or the second year? Because like I registered in 2019. And uh, now they're giving me the details, like you know, all the class. I yeah. tried contacting them many times. I've got no books. I've tried all the way possible, but you know, they don't respond. So I, I actually don't know which class is like this one. Is it like oh. second year class or first year class? This is the first year class, madam. Okay, so like first semester, first year. First semester. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you, sir. So nice of you. Thank you.